to game five. Last night, Warriors Raptors Kevin Durant made his return, but it was short lived. Second quarter after scoring 11 points, pulls up with what is reportedly believed to be a torn Achilles. He left the court, he left the arena on crutches. So, how did the Warriors do without him? Let's get back to the game, find out. Less than a minute and a half to go. Warriors down three. Steph Curry to tie. Three of his 31 on the night. Next possession, Clay Thompson finishes the nice ball movement. From deep, he finished with 26. Let's take you to the final possession now. Warriors up one. Kawhi Leonard giving up the ball. It ends up over in the corner with Kyle Lowry, and he cannot get it to go. Warriors survive 106-105. They still trail in the series three games to two. All right, Nick, lots to get to in this one. How did the Warriors overcome Kevin Durant's injury to win this game? Well, to me, it's a tale of two stories. One is in the first 42 minutes, and the other's in the final six. They, Durant obviously was the best player on the court, looked like, in those opening 14 minutes. He played 12 of them. He was three of three from three. And then, and the Warriors are in control of the game, he goes down. And all of a sudden, Boogie Cousins, who was told he's going to get the first of his career a DMP coach's decision, he's pressed into action. And it didn't look like game three or game four, Boogie. He looked much more like game two, Boogie, and gave them much needed offense and a much needed lift. And Steph and Clay, who were really good from the opening tip, then understood it is now going to fall all on us. They combined in this game for 57 points, and the Warriors are in control for the first three and a half quarters. And then Kawhi Leonard took over. Kawhi Leonard, who was having the worst game he's had in these playoffs since game two against Milwaukee. Not coincidentally, since then, the Raptors had won seven of eight. He had been totally sensational. He was having a bad game. And then he scored 12 fourth quarter points, including 10 points in a row, to where the Raptors, who had trailed for 41 of the first 42 minutes, took the lead. And then the final three minutes, Nick Nurse calls a timeout. The Raptors go cold. Steph and Clay make you remind you of 2015, 2016 of Splash Brothers going back and forth, back breaking threes. And all of a sudden, the Raptors find themselves on the brink after I thought, I think the whole world thought, see, when Kawhi went on that run, the Raptors were going to win this game. That the Warriors' dam had broken and that the, and that the Warriors who didn't, they only had one timeout, so they weren't able to stop the run themselves and the crowd was out of its mind. That the Raptors were getting ready to win their first championship. And then that final three minutes, the game totally flipped for a second time with that 9-2 run. The only basket the Raptors made was a goaltending call on Boogie Cousins. And now all of a sudden, we're a game away from a real series unfolding for us in these NBA Finals. Yeah, the Raptors' inability to be able to shoot, to hit wide open shots. Anytime they've struggled in this series, when, why? They can't hit wide open shots. So it's not the Warriors' total defense. It's the inability for the Raptors to be able to make shots. That was the number one reason they were able to overcome the, the deficit of Kevin Durant and the emotion of it. Because Toronto had every look that they wanted. Um, I said when they lost game number two, and they're getting every shot that they want. Even when they struggled offensively, Danny Green, he's getting every shot that he wants. They couldn't hit shots early. And then later in the game, it becomes the Warriors, something they did that was really special outside of hitting the 23s that they hit. I don't know an NBA team that's going to ever be able to beat the Warriors if they make 23s. NBA Finals, a difference of 12 more made threes, the second most in NBA Finals history. But their ability to take advantage of offensive rebounds and getting second, ch second chance points. They had six offensive rebounds that generated a ridiculous number of 19 points off only six offensive rebounds. When you're able to get that type of shooting and you're able to get those types of second chances, this Warriors team, at the end, they locked them up for one possession. Great a substitution by Steve Kerr. Put Sean Livingston in. Put takes out Boogie Cousins. So when Kawhi, when they double him, he swings it um, to Van Fleet. He has a six-seven, six-eight guard on him. So he decided not to take that shot. He swings it to Kyle Lowry, and because they put Draymond in the free safety position on the defense, where he was playing Gasol and playing Lowry in the corner, Draymond is able to get his six-nine body to he the corner, guard game. these two players, and able to get the deflection. So I said a lot. But the Golden State Warriors, listen, they won this by one point. So it's one possession, one missed shot, but they took advantage of shooting the three and the second chance points. Nick, did last night change your perspective at all on where this series is going? I think the Raptors are the better team. I think they've shown it over five games, but it, 
the Warriors will be favorites in Game Six. I don't know. I don't. I want to see. The, obviously, Kevin Durant's going to be out. I want to. I want to think more about Game Number Six before I say who I think is going to win. But you but talked the, about all week a, sh a shift in paradigm, right? You talked about something that could maybe turn this mm -hmm. around. Could the fact that Clay and Steph played so well on the road could could that be or or playing off KD's injury? I, if be there something? is a shift in the paradigm, I think it's more likely if the Warriors are going to come back and not only force a Game Seven but win the championship. The shift in paradigm to me wouldn't have been Kevin Durant coming back from the injury, but how the Raptors recover from being this close to a championship, from having a six point lead with three minutes left to where, and, and in those last, Nick Nurse also got to recover. Nick Nurse did Steve Kerr a favor calling that timeout to stop his own run with three minutes left, and then did Kerr another t favor by not calling the timeout after Boogie Cousins committed that illegal screen. The Warriors, because it's out of bounds, the Warriors are going to be able to sub anyway. They're going to be able to put out their lineup they want anyway. You, you call timeout, you bring the ball to the front court, you draw up the best play you've ever had to win a championship. Those are your options. I think he made the wrong call in both spots. Is that a little Monday morning quarterbacking? On the final possession, maybe, on the first one, in real time, I think people were surprised he stopped his own run with the timeout when Kirk couldn't have stopped it himself. And so how do they recover from being that close to a title and now having to go to Oracle to play game six? I'm going to push back on two things. Nick Nurse had his best play call. Nick Nurse said they stopped going pick and roll at Kawhi Leonard because they were jumping and double teaming Kawhi. So they started going to a 1-4 set. That's the set where Kawhi was going one-on-one. -on -one. Iggy forced them out of that by coming out of the zone that he was playing to be able to attack Kawhi. So he was in the best play. That was the best play that they've run this series. Kawhi, y'all move out the way and let me work. Don't, I don't need a pick. I don't need any help getting open. But because the double team came, they took that away. From an NBA, last season they changed the rules. So a lot of NBA coaches in Nick Nurse's position, they would have called timeout. They changed the rule last year. Under three minutes, you only get two timeouts. At that time, they had four timeouts. He saw his team was exhausted. Kyle Lowry even kind of motioned to him that he wanted a timeout. So I could understand. I'll give him that. And the reason why we're criticizing him because the momentum stopped. All right? Nick Nurse did what a lot of coaches would do. He called one so he wouldn't waste them. And the last point on this, I, I know all day long people are going to say, should Kawhi have taken that shot? Right. No. Not when you're double teamed by Andre Iguodala. People glorify Kobe would have taken that shot. Okay, maybe. But there's a reason why Kobe is 6 of 23 on those shots. A shooting percentage right over 25%. Because he took a lot of terrible ones. I, we glorify guts over smarts far too often in sports. Kawhi Leonard had a chance to have arguably the single greatest moment in NBA history. We've never had a buzzer beater to win a championship. And he turned it down because it was the smart play. It didn't work out, but it was the right play for the Raptors. We're back here tomorrow morning. We got to go. Now over to France for the Women's World Cup.